Hey. All right, let me get attention. Away we go. Uh, today we're going to talk about the unit circle. Uh, we really have to know the first quadrant. Now, we talked about how with trig functions, it's a ratio of the sides. So it doesn't matter how big the triangle is, as long as the angles are the same, the trig values are going to be the same for all sizes of triangles. If we don't care how big the triangle is, well then let's make the hypotenuse one. And so we could draw a triangle at this angle right here, and the hypotenuse would be one. And then we could draw a triangle here, and the hypotenuse would be one, and so on. So all the hypotenuses would be one, all the way around the circle. But we have these special angles around the circle that correspond to the special right triangles. Let's start with zero degrees, which is zero radians. And if the radius of the circle got it. is one, then this must be the point one zero. Now we know that from yesterday that the x-coordinate is the same as cosine. Actually, this should be, we like to use thetas. So cosine is the x, sine is the y. So now we know that the cosine of zero degrees, or the cosine of zero radians is one, and the sine of zero is zero. Then this is 30 degrees, and this is pi over six. If we cut 180 into six pieces, we get 30 degrees. And if we plug the 30, 60, 90, if we place the 30, 60, 90 right triangle here, we'd find out that this point is, uh, well, if from here to the edge of the circle is one unit long everywhere, so from here up to the edge of the circle up there is one. Let's, let's get it so we can see it. I could, this is the x coordinate and this is the length of the y coordinate. So to find this point, I could go along the x over to here and along the y up to here. So as we go from center to the outside along the x and center to the top, which one looks like a half? Which one looks like halfway? Along the x? Does that look like halfway, that dotted line? Or does the dotted line look like halfway going up along the y? Up, right? So the y value for pi over 6 is that's the half. Now what goes along with the half is the square root of 3. Square root of 3, oh, for crying out loud. Half, square root of 3 over 2. Well that means, and I know that you're not sitting there going, oh, prove it. Uh, I, I think you can take my word for it, but all right, I'll prove it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, all right, hey, back off. Uh, <laughs> modes and radians. So we're going, let's go with cosine. Cosine of pi divided by 6. That's going to be a decimal value, but if we take the square root of 3 divided by 2, take that. Okay. Um, so now all the pi over 4s, they're just square root of 2 over 2. They have to be the same, and if you look at the special right triangles, we had square root twos in there. <coughs> now, if I draw a dotted line down here to the x, dotted line over here to the y, this distance is clearly past a half, and this one is right at a half. So now it's the x that's a half, and this is square root of three over two. By the way, this is 60 degrees. That's pi over three. Oh, I didn't fill in this one either. This is 45 degrees, which is your first pi over 4. Then to finish out the first quadrant, we're up here at 90 degrees, or pi over 2, and that's the point zero, 01. That one's straight up. So 1s and zeros, those are straight up, straight to the left, and so forth. Now, in general, you only have to know five values. 0, 1, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and one half. Those are the five values that we use around the circle. For
for sine and cosine. Now that you know the first, well, if you, when you know the first quadrant, if you don't know by now, that's all you need to know. The rest of it are exactly the same. For example, this obtuse angle right here, we can refer to reference angle, we can refer to that pi over 3. This is 120 degrees, this is 2 pi over 3. So the x and the y for pi over 3 will be the same for 2 pi over 3 with the exception of x has to be negative now. So this is negative 1 half, positive square root of 3 over 2. The y is still positive. For 3 pi over 4, or 135 degrees, 3 pi over 4, it's the same as pi over 4, except x is negative. And then this is 150 degrees, which is a 5 pi over 6. And that's the same over there. That's square root of 3, negative. Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Let's keep going. We don't have a whole lot left. This is 180 degrees, uh, which is pi radians. This is negative 1, 0. 30 more degrees, we get 210. This is one of the pi over 6's. 7 pi over 6. And this is, I think about the half. I think negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. 45 more degrees, that's 225. 4 fourths, 5 fourths. This is a, this is a pi over 4. Uh, which is negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. We're in the third quadrant, so both x and y are negative. This is 240, 60 degrees past 180. This is a pi over 3. This is the fourth pi over 3. Pi is the third pi over 3. It's pi. Negative 1 half, <clears throat> negative square root of 3 over 2. So 1 half and square root of 3 over 2 go together. You just got to know where to put what. This is 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2. This is point zero, negative 1. So I'm 3 fourths away around the circle. Are there any questions so far? Is there anything I can clear up? Anything that you don't understand about this whole process? Are we good so far? You really need to know this really well. If, if you said, hey, what's the one thing I should learn out of honors pre-calculus out of the entire year? This is it right here. This is the big one. All right, uh, to finish it out, we have uh, 30 more degrees. That'd be 300. This is a pi over 3. 3 thirds, 4 thirds, this must be 5 pi over 3. Or you could say, well, we're almost to 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. This is 315 degrees. This is a pi over 4. 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths. Almost 8 fourths. Uh, this is the square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. And then finally we have 300, yeah, the, no, not 300, 330, excuse me, 330 degrees. This is a pi over 6, this is 11 pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. I'll let you catch up. Then we have a little bit more to talk about about the unit circle. You can type unit circle into Google and you can download about a thousand different versions of these. All filled out. If you ever, you know, if you need one where you hope there's no mistake on yours. Tangent, I'm just looking for some white space now. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine. It's really on the, if we look at the x coordinate and the y coordinate, it's y over x, opposite over adjacent. Well, Sine and y are the same, x and cosine are the same. So tangent is sine over cosine. Cos, uh, secant and cosecant, those are reciprocals of sine and cosine, cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. Now we have this positive and negative up here. Positive, all of them are positive in the first quadrant. None of the trig functions are negative. Sine's positive, cosine's positive, tangent's positive. So the other three are positive too. Here, y is positive, x is negative. Uh, so sine is positive, 
that means cosecant is positive also. The negatives are cosine, secant, tangent is also negative because you're taking a positive divided by a negative, sine over cosine, so cotangent is also negative. In the third quadrant, did you guys get that? Am I going too fast? Oops. Undo that. In the third quadrant, now they're both negative. Sine and cosine are both negatives. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want that there. I want it in the negative. Sine's negative. Cosine's negative. So secant's negative. Cosecant's negative. But tangent and cotangent are positive. You're taking a negative divided by negative. And finally, in the, the fourth quadrant, positive is x. Cosine and secant are positive. Everybody else is negative. Sine, cosecant, tangent, cotangent are all negative in the fourth quadrant. Of the sine, cosine, and tangent, it's all students take calculus. Those are the positive ones. All are positive, sine's positive, tangent's positive, calculus is positive, or calculus, cosine's positive. Cosine's positive. That's the mnemonic we use. And no, I know all students don't take calculus. I know. But that's the mnemonic we use. We have to come up with something that starts with C. All of you will. I hope anyway. I love you guys. I want to see you again. I want to teach all of you again. All right, any questions on this unit circle stuff? Here is, I mean, this is what your gateway quiz is going to be about. It's going to be 15 of these. For two points apiece, for a total of 30 points, you got to keep taking until you get a 27 out of 30. You have to be able to do this. It's not an option. All right, find the exact value of the expression. Sine of 4 pi over 3. 3 thirds, 4 thirds. That's right here. Now, if I attached a circle to the end of this, right there, with, and this is a, a, a unit circle at 1, which one is the half? Is the x the half or is y the half? What do you think? Can you visualize it? What do you think? What? Oh, because you, you cheated, in other words? Well. So the point is negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. So the sine of this is negative square root of 3 over 2. So if we grabbed our calculator, it's sine of 4 pi over 3, it would spit out the decimal for square root of 3 over 2, negative. 7 pi over 6, that is 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, that's right here. That terminal point. Uh, is uh, negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Now this is cotangent. The way I think about it is tangent is sine over cosine. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So it goes this way, cosine divided by sine. It's x over y. Now that's negative square root of 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. The good news is it, for the values we have as fractions, all of them are over 2. The other numbers are 0 and 1. So we can multiply the top and bottom by 2. Negative over negative is a positive. So the answer is the square root of 3. Half the battle is finding the angle, 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is right there. Negative square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2, that's the point. So the cosine is the x. So negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent of negative 45 degrees. Negative 45, you start here and you go backwards. Clockwise, ironically, is backwards. So the tangent, well, the point is uh, square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. So if you're dividing the same number, this answer is negative 1, sine over cosine. It's negative 1. Stop me if you're like, I don't know what you're, I don't know where you're getting this. 
I get it. But that doesn't help you out. Uh, 390, 360, and another 30. So this is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. I want the secant of that. No, okay. uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I want the reciprocal of this. That's 2 over the square root of 3. Square root of 3 over square root of 3. So the answer is 2 square root of 3 over 3. So there are other values that you get when you do reciprocal. But they're the five big ones. 0, 1, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2. Otherwise, we're taking the reciprocal of them. Negative 150. That's almost, that's 30 degrees short of 180. This is negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Cosecant. I want the reciprocal of sine. It's the reciprocal of negative 2. That's, or excuse me, negative 1 half, which is negative 2. Now, not opposite reciprocal. I never said opposite reciprocal. That's for perpendicular lines. That has nothing to do with this. Reciprocal, just reciprocal. Sometimes like, students get opposite reciprocal locked in because of that stinking perpendicular stuff. And it ruins everything else. It's just reciprocal. I digress. 11 pi over 6. That's almost all the way around. Right there. Now that point is square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. See how the same values keep popping up over and over and over again. There's not 100 of them. There's 5 of them. It's only 5 choices. Cotangent. Well, tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Square root of 3 over 2. One of them is negative. Uh, the y is negative. That's negative. Over negative 1 half. So negative square root of 3 is the answer there. And finally, the last one that we have for an example today, tangent of 300. Great movie, by the way. That's 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. Sine over cosine. That's going to be negative square root of 3 again. Any questions? I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't think it's horrible, but it's so important. Unbelievably important. What else do we have? This kind of goes along with it. Uh, this cosine, cosine cannot be three. That's impossible, so let's just make it a third. When, I, when my secretary typed it up, she didn't put a one on top. <laughs> Weird, huh? I don't have a secretary. It's me. <laughs> But this says sine is less than zero and cosine is less than zero. In other words, the y is less than zero, x is less than zero. What quadrant does that put us in? Fourth? Fourth. Or the third? The third. I'm going to go with third. That's where x and y is negative. So we're going to have some arbitrary angle. We don't really care what the angle is. We don't need to know it to find these values. So some arbitrary angle. And then we're going to draw the triangle to the x-axis. Always to the x, never to the y. Never. That is, drawing it to the y doesn't make any sense. Now here's the angle that we're looking at. There's theta. And it turns out cosine, it can't be 3. It's got to be 1 over 3. Uh, so this is the, uh, no, no, adjacent, sorry, adjacent. 1, that's the 1. This is the 3. But we know that that needs to be negative 1 because that puts us I guess it has to be negative one third. <laughs> Sorry. If this was theta, and if I would have left it as cosine is three, that'd be three over one, that'd be adjacent over hypotenuse. What's wrong with that? Smaller. Yeah. You can't have a, a sign bigger than the hypotenuse. That doesn't work. So what's the biggest cosine can be? What's the biggest it can be? Do you see it? You see it? I see it. 
one, subtract one. What's the smallest cosine can be? Negative. Negative one. Yep. So the biggest cosine can be is one. Smallest it can be is negative one. But now we're really getting ahead of ourselves. All right. I don't want to mess you up on this problem either. First of all, I got to make it negative one third if we're going to be in the fourth quadrant. Third quadrant. We need this side, don't we? So uh, one squared is one plus a or b or whatever you want to call it. a squared equals nine, eight, uh, two squared to two. Uh, two squared to two, right? So sine, cosine, tangent, uh, cosecant. Secant, cotangent. Sine, this side is two square root of two. So sine is opposite over, hypo uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, so two square root of two over three. Cosecant is three over two square root of two. Three square root of two over four. Sine is, oh, they're both negative. That's a negative. That's a negative. That's a negative. Cosine, negative one third. Secant, negative three. Tangent's going to be positive. Opposite over adjacent. So two squared to two. Cotangent is one over two squared to two. Squared to two over four. Questions on that? Next one. Secant of theta is 4. That can happen. 4 over 1. Sine is negative, so y is negative. x cosine is positive. That puts us in the fourth quadrant. We'll draw some arbitrary angle. Uh, we'll draw that triangle to the x-axis. This is our theta right here. Now secant is a reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this must be hypotenuse over adjacent. Now this is a positive one. This y value over here, that'll be negative. We have 16 is equal to one plus whatever. Probably, we should probably make it, it's really y squared. Uh, so y squared equals uh, 15. So y is the square root of 15. It's actually negative square root of 15. So y is negative there. All right, here we go. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So negative square root of 15. So this is Negative 1 over square root of 15. Square root of 15 over 15 when we rationalize. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 1 fourth. This is 4. Oh, for crying out loud, yes. Thank you. Over 4, not 1. Let's try it again. Yeah, over hypotenuse. Did I get cosine right? Yeah, I did over hypotenuse there. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So negative square root of 15. There we go. Any questions after I fumbled that up a little bit? No, we're good? All right, the last page. This is what you need to be able to do. Can you fill this in? with radians and the point without looking. Looking is called just copying it down again. Can you fill in quadrant one? That's what you need to know. If you can fill out quadrant one without looking, you should be able to fill in the rest, the whole circle.
before we take the gateway, we're going to have a test that we're going to have to take. It's the first half or so of chapter four. And when we take this gateway, it's two points a piece for each of these. So like uh, if I said, what is the cosine of two pi over three? That's right here. That's negative one half square root of three over two. If you put negative one half, of course you get the two points. If you put one half, you get one off. That's a minus one, you missed the sign. If you have negative square root of three over two, that's minus two. Because I don't care that you got the sign right, the number's wrong. Number's wrong, it's a minus two. Number's right, the sign's wrong, it's a minus one. And most of the time, you'll have to retake it because you missed negative signs. That's usually how it goes. You, you're so focused on the number, you forget the negative. Or you can't find the angle. You don't know which one you're looking at. That's a common mistake, too. Uh, so we'll keep practicing this. This is not the only time you're going to see it. And we'll keep taking that. The good news is you should end up with a nice quiz grade. That's the good part. The bad news is you got to keep going till you get the nice grade. The average is two and a half times is what you'll The average. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, didn't you say it's like a time thing? So like you want to... I don't time it, no. Okay. So you get like the whole period. You get whatever. Usually about a 15 minute deal. Uh, about half of you will pass it the first time. Half of you won't. Usually. What if all of you? But if all of us do, yeah. that will never happen. Time? What if it does? That would be pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> now that you said it, big mouth. I'll be the one person that fails. No, you'll have, you'll be in good company. All right, uh, that's all I got for you. Assignment. Memorize these words. Yeah. 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 Ye